Hey everyone, welcome back to another PNS overview. Today we're taking a look at Ivan, the Aloro Titan. I know, I know, I'm really late with this review. That's because I've seen that really anger the shipping gods lately. A lot of stuff I've ordered from outside the country has been taking a lot longer to get to me than most other people. I've seen people receive their figures weeks before me, even though I've ordered them around the same time. But anyways, it's finally here and I'm excited for it. I always love PNSOs take on hadrosaurs and a lower titan is a species that's barely been made into figures uh the only other one i can really think of is uh collect days decent attempt from a few a uh, few years ago but like i said i'm happy it's finally here so let's jump into this review i ended up getting this figure from amazon which is shipped directly from pns so it retails for almost forty dollars but i will leave a link to that amazon listing down below in the description so let's just go over the packaging really quick before we take a closer look at Ivan. Comes in the standard prehistoric animal models boxes that we've been seeing for years now. Got a nice picture of Ivan on the front. It's number 53 in the prehistoric animal models line. Top of the box, you have a nice close-up of Ivan in that hatchet-looking crest. Other side, same picture. Don't need to talk about the rest of the box. Uh, you do get a pamphlet. Um, a little booklet now before it just was like a fold-out pamphlet It just had the skeletal and a couple pictures of Ivan with like a very childlike story and this seems to be something new um, This is the first PNSO figure I've gotten since the Mementi source I'm not picking up any of the uh, marine animals that come out So I'm sure this is probably the standard now going forward. You do get a bunch of pictures of Ivan in all different angles throughout this booklet and then for the rest of the booklet you know you get your standard uh you know ivan you know kitty story and then a lot of uh history on pnso as a company uh suggested reading and stuff so yeah definitely uh more information included in these boxes than we're used to but another thing that they've been doing for the last few releases you do get a nice fold out poster and let's get this opened up you get a nice picture of Ivan let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it and let me just turn my light to the side so we don't get all that clear um I have to say I much like the coloration on this poster than the actual figure itself I think the figure is a little bit drab I would like to see more color I like this green and yellow on here uh but one thing I did notice if you look at the hands it you know has the outdated hands uh the figure itself actually has you know that giant hoof that was discovered with the uh, Dakota specimen a couple years ago. And just like, you know, every other uh, bipedal PNSO figure as a late, you do get a little stand with it. But we'll go over the stand a little bit later on in the review. So let's get Ivan up on the turntable and take a closer look. All right, let's start with a nice 360 degree view of Ivan. I really, really love this figure. I absolutely love the pose on there. It's so lifelike and conveys a lot of motion. Kind of outside the box for PNS, a lot of the figures are just sculpted in a standing walking pose. You know, they look very static, but this one just conveys so much life and movement the way it's sculpted. All the previous hadrosaurs that they did have been sculpted in a quadrupedal position. So it's really refreshing to see one rearing up on its hind legs. And I just love the pose. The arms are swinging to the side slightly. The head is craned. It's either rearing up to forge or it's just sculpting the area really quick for predators. And it reminds me of like how Papo does their figure. Papo always does a very good job of creating very lifelike poses. The figures feel alive. And this figure invokes that. It just feels like... It's a living animal, and I just really, really love the pose on there. The uh, color scheme, it's a little drab and boring. You know, you have that bright, you know, vibrant orange crest on there with the pattern that looks pretty much exactly the same like PNS's old Stegosaurus uh, Bieber. I would like to see maybe a little bit different color and variation on the head crest because this reminds me of that Stegosaurus plate. Uh, the body color is just like dark grays and like really deep purple like like deep bruise purple and you have like a little bit of cream color mixed in there with some black markings not the most exciting color scheme but you know you could ignore that because the figure is beautifully sculpted lots of fine scale details and like i said just love the pose that this figure is sculpted in and lower titan is a pretty interesting hadrosaur it's part of the lambian uh Sorenize. Uh, you know, they're a family of crested hadrosaurs. It's from the late Cretaceous period of Russia. But what's interesting is during that time that this species existed, 
Lambiosaurs were pretty much non-existent in North America at the time, but they were pretty diverse and abundant in Asia near the end of the Cretaceous period. And let's just do a couple of quick measurements on Ivan. Figure if you measure along the curve of the neck and curve of the tail, it's about eight and a half inches long and just a hair over five and a half inches tall uh, to the top of that crest. So there's a couple size estimates for a lower Titan. The smallest being 26 feet and the largest being almost 40 feet. So with those two measurements, I'll put this figure somewhere in the 135 to the 155 scale range. As you can see, this figure stands pretty well on its two feet. It's basically a tripod figure. That tip of the tail is helping with that stability, but you do get the little base. And if you want, you just position it underneath the chest. The way the figure is sculpted, it's leaning to the side. So all that weight is on the tip of this tail. And it's a pretty hard material. It's a little bit flexible. So this is one of the rare cases where I'm not worried about uh, not using the base for this figure. I don't think it's going to fall over and warp over time. I think it's pretty stable the way it's sculpted. All right, let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on Ivan, starting with that beautiful head sculpt. Another really done head sculpt from PNS. I love how this turned out. You can see the characteristic hatchet shaped crest is nicely sculpted. You know, the only negative I have about the crest is it just reuses the same color palette as the uh, Stegosaurus plates, I would like to see that done in a different color. You can see the nostrils are clearly sculpted in with the beak. The eye is painted in yellow with a black pupil. You do have some very fine and soft scale detail all over the head. And then on the underside, you can see, you know, that big seam line. It's not as bad as I've seen on some of the new marine figures from PNS. So a lot of people are kind of losing their minds over that but you know seam lines are part of uh you know making figures but it's on the underside so it's really not that bad and then going down to the neck you can see some nice folds and wrinkles with some really fine scale detail mixed in with that gray and that really really deep purple like i said the color scheme is kind of bland on this figure i would like to see it look more like the poster that comes inside the packaging but it's really not that bad i really do quite like this figure it actually might end up being my favorite dinosaur figure uh, in 2021 from PNS. That's how much I like this thing. I just absolutely love the pose. Going down to the main body, you can see some really fine scale detail with little larger osteoderms peppered in throughout. You got a nice row of spikes that start right behind the crest. It goes all the way down the back, all the way down to the very, very tip of the tail with the camera uh, focus in on that. And then going back up to the body, you got some nice folds and wrinkles that convey all that motion in the sculpt like i said just the sculpt in this thing is absolutely fantastic love the bipedal look on here here is the front reach you can see all the chest muscles are nicely sculpted in and then going down to the hands you can see they have that you know one large uh hoof which i said is related to the dakota specimen man my camera does not want to focus in on that there we go it's just kind of weird that the uh poster does not reflect that. Maybe it was just some older artwork that they had lying around. But anyways, it's nice to see that they're incorporating that in, even though it's only known from one specimen. Currently, who knows? When there's more specimens found, that might actually change. And then going down to the thighs, you can see some nice heavy muscles for the hind legs, some more folds and wrinkles around the kneecap. Going down to the feet, because the feet are nicely sculpted with the toe claws. They always kind of give a lot of their figures... Uh, Man, my camera is not liking this figure today. Uh, this dark wash around the feet to kind of make them look dirty and stuff. I really don't mind that too much. Then you get some nice dark striping along the back. And it gets more prominent when you get past the hind legs. And you get some really nice dark stripes along the tail. And here's a view of the figure from the top. Uh, a lot of nice definition. Not too chunky. Not shrink wrap. I feel like it's just sculpted just right. Base of the tail is nice and thick and meaty. You got more folds and wrinkles and just all that really fine scale detail. You know, it's, it has a nice feel when you rub your finger over. You can definitely feel all the nice texture in. Some more folds and wrinkles down the tail. And then that, you know, dark purple and gray kind of gives way for this lighter cream color. And then turn it over. You can see the underside, same thing. A lot of nice scale details along the belly. And then you have a little bit of a red rash around the cloaca opening uh, on the figure you might want to get some baby wipes on there so yeah all in all i really really love how this figure turned out just like i said just absolutely 
love the pose. There's a little bit of a dip uh, on my studio. And when I just put the figure in this one spot, it does like to flip over. But I've had this on my shelf for weeks and it stands up just fine. Just this one spot, which is the dead center. That's why I always place all my figures and it's just wearing out uh, for the last you know, couple of years of doing all these reviews. But yeah, like I said, I think this thing just turned out absolutely fabulous. And I'm quite happy with it. Like I said, the only thing that just wish the colors were a little bit more vibrant. Other than that, I think they did a great job on it. Moving on with comparisons, first off, let's pull up some of PNSO's other hadrosaurs. Here is their Parasaurolophus, Lambiosaurus, and let's just line them up a little bit better so I can get them all in. And here is their Carithosaurus. And here is the Carithosaurus. Okay, much better. So anyways, here are the four hadrosaurs that PNS has released over the last couple years. And they've done a really good job with them. Their hadrosaurs have been some of my favorite figures that they've released. Uh, you know, they all scale okay with each other. I always felt like the Corythosaurus and Parasaurolophus were a little bit large compared to the rest of their figures. I feel like the Lambiosaurus and this Lower Titan are just right with the scale. I guess you can consider these two you know, extremely large examples of the species. But uh, I would love to see PNSO's take on crestless hadrosaurs going forward. You know, we've got, a, you know, four crested ones right here. And I'd like to see them like do like Anatosaurus, um, Hadrosaurus, you know, any of the crestless ones. But there's one crested one I really, really, really hope they do. And for those of you who know me, I've been dying for a good Sauralophus figure for a very long time now. So I do hope sometime in their future, PNSO does do that species. And next up, let's compare it next to some other Asian dinosaur species. Here is PNSO's Chinsusaurus. And next up, here it is with their Sinoceratops. It's so tough to get. There we go. That's much better, isn't it? And next up, here it is with their Tarbosaurus. And lastly, you can't do PNSO comparisons without comparing it next to Wilson, who is now currently balancing on one foot even with the base he does warp a little bit so final thoughts on this Alora titan i really love this figure i honestly think this is going to end up being one of my favorite figures uh from pnso this year love the pose on it i think it's very lifelike and it's nice to see uh hadrosaur figures sculpted in a bipedal position uh the sculpting detail is fantastic Negatives, the paintwork is a little bland. I wish it had a little bit more color to it, especially on the head crest. I've already given my reasons why a couple times why I'm not a huge fan of it. Just wish like the whole you know color scheme was just a little bit more vibrant. And the only other negative is the price. It's a $40 figure. You know, it's not that big. You know, yes, things are going up now. We're in a time of inflation. Materials are costing more and more. But, you know, PNSO price has been on the rise for... A bit now, you know, we got some figures from them that are bigger than this that cost half the price. I, I feel like, you know, if this was around $30, that's a much more fair price point. But I'm sure there's reasons behind it. I'm just saying, I just feel like, you know, the figure's not worth $40. But if you feel like plunking down $40 bucks for this figure, the link to that Amazon listing is down below in the description. So that would do it for the review. Uh, PNS has seemed to take a break from making uh, dinosaurs currently. The last few releases have been a lot of aquatic animals, which is fine. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably not going to be reviewing any of those. You know, I am interested in that stuff, but I am on a budget when I do these reviews. And, you know, I'd rather just stick with the dinosaurs because I also collect Transformers. And for anyone that collects Transformers, you know that is a ludicrously expensive hobby. So I do have to make choices in what I pick up in review. Um, you know, Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians should be shipping a month from now. I'm supposed to be getting a couple figures in for early reviews. Uh, I'm sure I'll be hearing from David relatively soon about those i know he's been busy with the uh Transor kickstarter I have a couple more jurassic world uh figures to review so be on the lookout for all those reviews and as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated i'll see you guys for the next one